Hi, everyone. My name is Ross Panfortuni, Managing Editor of GovCIO Media and Research, recording here from Billington Cybersecurity Summit in D.C. Joining me now is Tara Wisniewski, Executive Vice President of Advocacy, Global Markets, and Member Engagement. Let's first start off talking about the cybersecurity workforce, because I know there's been a lot of talk this week about the cybersecurity sprint. And in the public sector, there is this need and a pretty big gap. How do you see that playing out and how is how are the ways to skin that particular cat? Yep. Yep. So we definitely see it and we will continue to see the cybersecurity workforce gap. Uh, in fact, we, uh, believe that there is a lot of action happening in the regulatory environment that actually is going to exacerbate the gap. And so it's a real thing and uh, we think it's getting worse. In terms of how you skin that cat, um, we spend a lot of time talking and thinking about what, what, what we should be, what we as an organization should be doing, but also when we stand in front of policymakers, what should we be asking them and recommending that they do? Um, unfortunately, I think that there's, uh, it's a, it's a patchwork. I think that there's a hope that there is a silver bullet, but there isn't. And so what it really is going to require is kind of full court press from the entire ecosystem. And by that, I mean, not only does there need to be federal legislative inter- intervention, but there's already quite a bit happening at the state level that needs to continue. And then organizations like ISC2 need to make sure that they are doing what they can to get people into the pipeline. But then it's also important for industry to, to play a role here. And in some ways, I think that that's a really critical missing piece, because one of the things that we hear about often Often is we have a lot of people that are going into the trying to get into the pipeline and struggling to kind of crack crack that entry level. And we know that it's hard to crack that entry level because cyber teams are under so much pressure to perform. They don't have the time to actually train people up and they're also fighting for training dollars. But we got to do something to get more people into the pipeline. I know there's a lot of talk the last the previous administration. Talks a lot about uh, the paper ceiling. Yes. Um, this administration has, has taken that ball and run with it to a certain extent. Yep. Presumably the next one will do the same. Yes. You can talk about that, about the paper ceiling and the notion that like skills-based hiring versus... Absolutely. Absolutely. Hiring. We are big advocates of skills-based hiring. We do support the Access Act, which is the act that is uh, looking to remove the four-year degree requirement for uh, four roles. We think that that's really, really important. We think that there are are a lot of opportunity if we focus on skills-based requirements to kind of as that's a good uh, one of the the ways that we can help uh, just kind of close the gap a little bit more. And even within that, though, we have a lot of work to do to make sure that people understand what skills-based hiring looks like and also, you know, how does it, we need to map those skills into roles. And so we're certainly doing that. There's a lot of that activity happening. DOD is doing it. Um, but it is, uh, in, indeed, the, we're at a, a reckoning moment, I think, in terms of the, the paper ceiling. Yeah, I mean, as far as regulatory issues, you had touched on that before. How are improvements being made on that? What improvements need to continue to be made? How can, uh, particularly in the public sector, but also contracting, um, industry, all that stuff? Yeah. Make it so it's easier to hire people. Well, it's really interesting. So this morning I moderated a panel on security policies and we talked about the, the regulatory came up like almost immediately, right? And how security policies need to have this important posture and regulatory environments kind of pushing that. And part of that conversation was also how is regulation helping to just provide some ease uh, in terms of just compliance, right? And there's a lot to be done around harmonization. A little non sequitur there, right? But I think that what regulation needs to do is if it, you're going to call for cybersecurity professionals, you need to clarify what a cybersecurity professional is. And that is a way that you can reinforce skills-based hiring and certainly call out things like credentials, uh, like experience um, that could that could really have alternative pathways for people to enter a sector. Something I've talked to some people in varying agencies, including the Defense Department, but also the uh, all that stuff is this notion that cyber is bolted on at the end. Yes. 
talk to the people you remember yeah. members is that something that you see in the public sector that this is a this is an issue that they're not uh agencies aren't really understanding the import of this stuff less and less so I think that the idea of security by design is certainly uh, no longer a novelty. It is certainly something that people are taking seriously and, and certainly thinking about. I do think that actually where the biggest challenges are for cybersecurity is actually in leadership, when leadership needs to um, kind of... So you've got a security team that's doing its job and, and they're doing all of it. And then they need investment from leadership, right, for that sec- cybersecurity work. And sometimes leadership doesn't understand what that is and they see it as that bolt on. And so I still think that there's a lot of work to do within organizations to kind of educate what the role and importance of cyber is from like top to bottom. But as cyber kind of moves out of IT and moves really into the business, I think that there is an evolution of it being baked in. So I think it's less of less of a bolt on. What I think is really a challenge is really the cyber posture for small and medium enterprises, because that's where it becomes an afterthought or not a thought at all. What does that look like? What is it? Where, where does, where do the real problems stuff. come in? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. scary stuff. I mean, so this is where you've got, you know, so it's, it's not the big organizations like a Microsoft, right? That has a, a huge security budget, a huge security team, all of that. It's your small hundred million dollar manufacturing business who has an IT, small IT department and someone like is kind of responsibility, kind of responsible for security, right? But you are going to have, if there's a breach or an incident, it, there's that's going to cripple that business, right? Which is still considered a small medium enterprise, right? And so the, we think that there's a lot of work to do around just um, really raising awareness around cyber and therefore raising cyber security posture and resilience. Is that a cultural thing? Is that a training thing? Is it a a little bit of column A, a little bit yes. of column B, hiring, it's, obviously. Yes. Yeah, it's all of the above. I think it's cultural. I think that it's also around uh, cyber not being that bolt on, to your point, right? And I also think that there's a lot of... um you know, the, the technology is moving so fast and it's changing so fast. So there's this almost this mindset of continuous learning that needs to be embraced and also therefore continuous thinking around being safe and secure. Yeah, I've, I've heard it described as sort of the, the non endpoint way to look at this. Oh, yeah. There's yeah, there is no there is no like checklist and stuff are they're yeah. valuable for sure, because yeah. you want to. It's you bet rather have them check the box than not, but right. you know, that's not the end uh, of any No, of and actually even this, it came up in this panel this morning of like, it's fantastic if you have uh, security policies, but if no one really understands how that impacts, like what's the purpose of a security policy, why you want to have one, how it actually lives and breathes, then it, it's kind of pointless, right? And so it needs to go beyond just the, all of those checklists. It really needs to be um, part of an organizational culture. And and I would argue even from a just a societal standpoint, you know, I think that people are more and more aware of the need for them to be cyber aware, but there's still so much work to do. Yeah, I guess I'll end on this, the, the, the question of digital natives and bringing them more into the fold in particularly in the public sector, but certainly industry-wide. Yeah. Is that a good thing or is it one of those things where a lot of digital natives know enough to be dangerous as yeah. opposed to somebody who just keeps everything on a floppy disk? Yeah, right, right. Or, or paper files. Um, I think that digital natives are, that's the way of the future, right? That, that it's here. It's done. Um, and I think that that's where from there, there's a need to educate people as early as they have got the technology in their hands to understand um, what uh, what the threat landscape is. And of course, it needs to be in the appropriate language. But I think that the threat landscape is getting more and more complex. And as we all have been, you know, I, I don't think there's any one of us where it hasn't been had our data compromised in some some way, right? And so we all need to kind of just understand what the implications of that is and really kind of embrace it as a, an ethos. 
it's a good way to think about it, I think. And hopefully uh, that'll be more part of uh, um, the cybersecurity landscape as we go forward. Yes, absolutely. I hope so. Well, thanks so much for doing this thanks, with us. Thanks, Ross. GovCast, along with HealthCast and CyberCast, is a production of GovCIO Media and Research. To explore our content, visit our website, govciomedia.com. Keep an eye out for new episodes every Tuesday. And if you like what you heard, leave us a review on the podcast platform of your choice. Have a topic you want us to discuss? Contact us at newsletter at govcio.com.